Today, we are gonna plant up my veggie garden and I pretty much keep my vegetables always in the same spot because I'm a creature of habit. And once I find something I like, I stick to it. So I use a few different size grow bags to grow my vegetables and just kind of my transition as a gardener over the last few years. When I started, I feel like I was mostly vegetables. In fact, I grew five tomato plants for just me and my husband and then just had some decorative flowers. Then I discovered the world of cut flowers and ordering flower seeds online that I couldn't find in stores. And now it's definitely like 75% flowers, if not maybe 80% and the rest is for vegetables. So I don't know if that's gonna be how it is for the next few years or if I'll kind of get a more even balance, but that's where my love is right now in the garden. But I do like to grow fresh vegetables and tomatoes are probably the number one I have to grow just because they taste so much different from what you can find in store. So I always have a couple tomato, I have a couple peppers. I'll show you everything that I'm gonna plant. But the first thing I wanna talk about are my grow bags. So these are 30 gallon grow bags. The brand is Garden Forever. They're from Amazon. I got these in 2019 at our last place where I was gardening. We moved with them. So we did empty them out to move in 2020, but basically since then, I have not swapped out any of the soil in here. So my raised beds, these large grow bags, anything that has a perennial in it, I'm not swapping out the soil, I'm just refreshing it. Anything that's a bit smaller, like my seven gallon grow bags, my pots of herbs, that I do empty out the soil into my storage bin. I'll pop that video down below. But this has been basically in the same spot with the same soil since 2020. One of these bags, so they also just stay out over winter, because they're too heavy to move around, which is why they're on wheels. But one of these bags, I swear had like a little slit in it that I now can't find. So I was gonna swap it out for a new one, which would mean transferring over the soil. But since they're all still holding soil just fine, I'm not gonna do that. But for being outside for five years in a row, all year round, I think this is pretty good. Also, price. When I got these again, five to six years ago, five years ago, I think it was $30 for a pack of five. So it came to about $6 each. You're not going to find a container this size, 30 gallons, it's also about 30 inches in diameter for $6. Grow bags are by far the cheapest. So when I knew I wanted a lot of room for my indeterminate tomatoes, grow bags for me was the way to go. Now, some of the things that I do with these, so I will chop up some of my plants in here I do have a tumbler composter on the back that I put plant waste in, but on the front, what I'll do, it'll chop up my plants as long as there are no disease issues. And I'll just bury the plant in the soil to let it break down. And by this time the next year, like I don't really see anything in there. Maybe there's a few thicker stems that I'll remove, but it's pretty much broken down. Also, sometimes there are larger root balls in these at the end of the season that are too hard to get out. So I also just leave the root balls over winter most of that breaks down. I just pulled out a really tiny one a couple weeks ago from what was a huge tomato root ball. So that's kind of my process for this. I don't worry about perlite. I know in my raised beds, I've shown that I add perlite to increase drainage, but because these are in grow bags, they're not just draining out the bottom, wherever the drainage hole might be. They are draining out all sides and the bottom. So I don't worry about my grow bags retaining too much moisture and leading to root rot. In fact, I've never had any root rot issues in grow bags, which is why I switched to using grow bags for my dahlias, because I had had that issue in the past. So no perlite in here. I did go ahead and add in some slow release fertilizer. I'm going to add in some compost. I have one bag. I'm hoping it's enough to add like an inch thick layer to the top of all of these. Um, I think I'm going to add in some earthworm castings. I fertilize throughout the season because a lot of vegetables, most of them are very heavy feeders. So I do fertilize regularly with liquid fertilizer. So I'll have slow release. I'll have the liquid fertilizer, earthworm castings. Just I do put good things back in here, but I don't swap out all of the soil. And so far it's worked. So I'm going to keep doing it until it stops working. So my plan for these three is a tomato in each of the bags on the end. With the tomato, I'm also going to companion plant basil. 
I'm gonna, I have nasturtium seeds that I need to start. I'm gonna direct sow those. I think I have some marigold seeds I wanna direct sow as well. So I don't just put one indeterminate tomato. In fact, I have grown two indeterminate tomatoes in one 30 gallon grow bag, but it just got really intertwined. Like they grew fine, it just kind of created a mess. So I do like to stick to one indeterminate tomato. In the center bag, I'm gonna put some giant zinnias. I did that last year and I really loved having some flowers in there and then I'm still figuring out because I have more vegetables than I think I can fit, but in these seven gallon grow bags, which these are from Smart Pot, these I'm gonna grow peppers. I have cucumber, zucchini, and then some other plants that I just got sent from Burpee that I need to go through, but I need to figure out how many bags I have, how much space I realistically have because I am trying to not overcrowd my garden this year. We'll see how it goes. Um, but since I know where I'm gonna put the tomatoes and all of that, let's do that first. And then I will go ahead and get the rest planted. And also let me show you the wheels I have, because again, these are too heavy to move around on their own. So the wheels makes them mobile, but also it lifts them off the deck so that the wet grow bag isn't sitting on the deck and just staying consistently moist. So I can't, lift up the bag to show you the caster. I'll link that down below, but let me just show you how easy it is to move these very heavy grow bags. There is no way I could wheel these around, whether I want to move them out, move them in, rotate them. I could not do that if there were not wheels on these grow bags. This is the bag of compost I have. And we're just going to divide it evenly between the three grow bags. Normally I go for about an inch thick layer, but I want to make sure I have enough for each. So I'm gonna see how this looks. Actually, I think this might be good. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. And these bags are also very full to the top, but since I'm using drip to water them, I mean, I still always try to have a lip if I can, if I need to water with the hose, but since I'm using a drip, it comes out slowly. So that should be fine. I'm also gonna put the drip in the bags after we get everything planted up. These are the different veggies I have. I think this whole tray is, well, except for this one. This whole tray is the one from Burpee. I'm gonna set these to the side. Then the ones I started from seed, which, oh, that's Burpee too. I always start more then I know I have room for in case something happens or I can just give the extra ones away. Are you also burpee? You are. So these are my tomato plants. I have four, I'm only gonna plant two. So I told myself that I don't need to label the tomatoes. I'm growing two different varieties. I don't need to label them because I'll just keep this one, which is the chocolate cherry next to the other one that was chocolate cherry and then I wouldn't have to label them all because I'd know which one was which except now I did move them around and I don't know which one is which now these this one is the smallest one so I'm not actually gonna plant this one I'm gonna plant the ones that look a little bit healthier and larger but I don't know of these three which two are what was the other one the gumdrop and which other one was the chocolate cherry. So this is why, no matter what you tell yourself, you should always label. So we'll figure that out in a second. The other plants I have that I started from seed, I have, oh, zucchini with a maple tree trying to grow in it. I have two zucchini and two cucumber. Again, I'm probably only gonna do, definitely one cucumber, one, maybe two zucchini. <sighs> probably just one zucchini as well. Again, space-wise, it's harder in a smaller garden to really have multiples of something. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And my zucchini are already starting to flower. So let's do tomatoes. We'll get those in. I'll guess which ones I'm planting and then we'll see once they start to fruit. Um, I need to grab the giant zinnias from the back deck and then we'll figure out what's gonna go in front because all the rest of these will be in the seven gallon grow bags lining the front of the 30 gallon grow bags. So this 
unidentified tomato is going to go in this grow bag and you can take off i'm going to remove some suckers i also already took off some of the lower branches because to create a deeper root system you can actually plant these deep on the stem so i'm probably going to plant it like up to here so that roots will start to grow out of the stem it'll just be a sturdier plant now i'm actually going to plant this a little bit towards the back so not completely in center because i am going to plant a few different things in front of it so i'm going to dig the hole again deeper than just this root ball and then cover you up so that is good i'm also going to go ahead and grab a cage because my tomatoes are indeterminate so they can get five feet tall if not taller so they will definitely need support all right i'm actually switching up what i'm going to do i'm going to plant one of these cherry tomatoes still indeterminate tomatoes from burpee and these yeah i can get to 60 to 84 inches tall just because i know for sure what this variety is it's going to stick the tag back there and then i think i'm going to put a final tomato plant in one of the new raised beds that I got from Epic Gardening. So this I'm going to just remove the lower branches and most of the time, unless again there's like pottery mildew or some disease issue, I just leave it on the grow bag to break down. Same thing, I'm going to do a little bit off center. and cover it up. Now I need to run to the back deck and grab my two basil. I need to grab the giant zinnias and then I need to grab the seeds that I'm going to direct sow in here. So I got everything out. I'm gonna plant up the giant venere zinnias first. So I have been growing these for a while and I got the giant venere mix at first. With mixes, you don't really know what color you're getting or planting. And then from that, I got the seeds for the specific colors that I liked the most. So these two are the giant wine. These two are the giant coral. And those have been my favorite. Now, last year I did five giant zinnias in here. And again, they grew fine, but it just was, I feel like a little bit too crowded. So I'm just gonna stick to four in this 30 gallon bag this year. So I'm gonna get these planted and that's everything that's gonna go in this bed. Now I did put cages around them in the back, but here what I found is because they're much closer together all in one bag. They almost kind of support each other. But if I do start to panic later on in the season, I'll just tie them all together with twine. That's my usual go-to when I didn't do the responsible thing earlier on in the season. But these, it's just pretty simple. I mean, you dig your hole, put in the flower. Like I said, I've spent how many weeks? These were actually the last ones I planted because they grow so quickly. So four weeks taking care of these, and now it takes less than a minute to actually get them into my containers. And there we go. Now this is when you resist the urge because it looks like there's so much more space, but you tell yourself they're going to grow. Don't shove more things in here. I started these for the MeTV. These are boxwood basils. They grow in a really cool little like hedge shape as you can see, but these, have been ready to get out for a long, long time. So they're gonna be very happy. Now these I do think I want kind of right in the center in front. And then this I'm going to bring back to my tumbler composter. So I'm just gonna to toss it in that bucket. Seeds I'm gonna grow are from the dwarf collection that I got from So Right Seeds. So they're smaller. So with the nasturtium tom thumb, Let's see what it says here. It still says planting spacing eight to 12 inches. Again, pretty much ignoring spacing in my garden. Um, they'll get to 16 to 18 inches tall. And I'm just gonna direct sow some. Now with these, last time I grew them, I did nick the outer shell just with these nail clippers I have here because the outer shell is thick. So to speed up germination and help the actual seed climb out of its shell, if you nick it, then it's going to be kind of given an easier exit. You can also soak them, but I didn't prepare ahead of time and soak them. So I'm gonna nick these. All right, so now for these French marigolds. These get up to 14 inches tall. 
So I'm going to plant obviously more and then thin them. I'll probably just have room for like one nasturtium on one side and then one marigold or maybe a couple marigold if I don't thin them too much on the other side. So that's going to be my plan. So let's do that. Um, let's see if it says planting depth half inch. I'm going to do three seeds in one hole. So let me nick them first. I feel like I should apologize for my dirty fingers, but also if you're watching people garden, you should expect dirty fingers. So that's it. I mean, I just like kind of scratch away, or I think it's scarify is the word, some of the surface. Maybe I'll do one on the other end for good measure. So I'm going to do that to all three. And then I'm just going to make a hole in here, about a half inch deep, and drop them all in. Cover them up. Now let's do the marigold. You don't have to do anything to these seeds other than plant them four and fourth inch deep. Make a hole over here. And drop the seeds in. And I took out way too many seeds, so let's just do the marigold over here. Now, do I want mirror image? No, I don't think I'll mirror image. I think I just want alternating. So you go in the same side, cover you up. Seeds back here. And then let's plant three nasturtium. One just fell in this last of the deck, but I'll plant these three nasturtium seeds in the other grow bag. Again, just nicking the seeds with my nail clippers. You can also use like a nail file. You can use scissors, but I just find the nail clippers to be the easiest. And we will put you right about there. All right, these three grow bags are finished. Now let's figure out what I'm planting in the seven gallon ones. I am done planting and I think I like all of my choices. Now, before I show you the specific plants that I chose, I did want to mention, I once again put these underneath the seven gallon grow bags. So those grow bags are light enough that I can pick up and move so they don't need wheels, but I still want to get them off of the deck. So those are under the bags. I use the same 19 inch cages that I used out back for my dahlias and giant zinnias there. I think I maybe only have like three left. I don't even know if I have anything in the garden that I want to put on it. But for me, like even though this zucchini is a bush variety, so it will stay more contained, I still like to have the extra support. Oh, oh, the first time I'm seeing a bee. Sorry, anyway, I still like to have the support to keep it even more vertical because that's always helpful in a small space and with the wind. So I put those in and then I also added in some worm castings. So I would say the two products necessarily products things I've been recommended the most by other gardeners is to put in earthworm castings and then fish fertilizer so I did get both of those I think last year was my first time using each and what I'm trying to do is go through my fertilizers that I currently have because I think I when I started gardening you know if there was a rose fertilizer I got that from my rose bush if there was a berry fertilizer I got that from my berries but then from like reading blogs and talking to other gardeners, it seems like really if you just have an all purpose, unless you're treating something very specific, you should be kind of good to go. So I'm working through kind of using up the fertilizers that I have using what people recommend. So this I think also said to put an inch thick layer on top, but I only had this one bag for all of those. So I just kind of divided it between all of them as evenly as possible and just mix that into the top. Now this is not, a fertilizer. In fact, if you look at the NPK, it's 0 0.500. So there's not a lot of the NPK in here. This is more of like a soil conditioner. So it improves the structure of the soil. What else does it say? Encourages plant growth. It, I think it more along the lines of it helps the soil do what it's supposed to do. 
helps the plant absorb the nutrients, but then you still supply the nutrients separately. So that's why I'm using like an all-purpose fertilizer, granular fertilizer, liquid fertilizer. So this is more like a soil conditioner and then you use the fertilizer to supply the nutrients. And I'll link down my fertilizer video below. So now let me show you what I actually planted. I went with one cucumber here and then I went with three sweet peppers. So I used to be a person that was like, well, I should grow a jalapeno pepper. I can make some salsa, but you know who doesn't eat a lot of jalapeno peppers or make a lot of salsa? Me. So I am, over the years, I've gotten better at growing what I actually eat versus just growing as many different things as possible. So there's three sweet peppers here. I think it's red, orange, yellow. Those are all from Burpee. This one I started from seed. Cucumber I also started from seed. So those are the five in there. And then again, my tomatoes, basil, and zinnia. Now I don't think I'm actually gonna water these in because we're getting rain in just a few hours. It's going to start. I will, however, check on these fairly regularly because, so if I was just worried about like the plants, I wouldn't have to check the moisture that often right now. But the seeds that I just planted, those need to stay consistently moist. So I wanna make sure the spots where I sowed the nasturtium and the marigolds don't dry out. So those I will keep an eye on. Again, with the amount of rain we've been having, the soil, soil stayed pretty moist on its own, so we'll see how it goes. But that is what my veggie patch is looking like. Just a look from a little further back. I think that looks so nice. Everything is really coming together. I'm so excited. So that's gonna be everything for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Also, let me know what veggies you were growing. Other ones that I used to grow that I realized I didn't like that much were like eggplant. So I like that I have what I'm gonna eat the most of in my small garden. I feel like that makes the best use of the space. So let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video where I'm sure we'll be planting even more.